Okay, so for those of you who don't know me and those who do, I am Dr. Sabina Shah, aka the Doc Shah. And I'm an academic practitioner in the field of film and animation. Most recently, I've written a book review for a dear contemporary of mine, Dr. Stephanie Vanderpeer. I was kindly gifted her edited collection by Professor Paul Wells and Dr. David Butler. So thank you guys very much for this. As you can see, it is entitled Animation in the Middle East, Practice and Aesthetics from Baghdad to Casablanca, published by IB Taurus, who tend to focus on Middle Eastern studies, politics and international relations, and also open to viewing animation as a cultural product. In my opinion, there is no other book that offers such a comprehensive overview on animation from the Middle East and from North Africa. Yes, there is a wealth of books and journals that include the odd essay, but the majority tend to focus on that of the animated cartoon from the United States. Therefore, what this book allows is the opportunity to chart the development of animation within both a historical and global context. However, there is one other book that both Stephanie and I recognise as being the first publication on the subject, and that is Mohamed Ghazala's 2011 Animation in the Arab World. It's brief, it's concise, it's informative, and very much necessary due to the death in literature. And he even contributes a chapter in here. Now what makes this book so special is that it's not only written by scholars but by practitioners as well. It also undermines the idea of the Arab region as a homogenous whole, thus breaking away from the Arab stereotype that has often been used to create a perception of a people due to the political, social and economic power structures that lie beyond and within the global film and media industry. The release of this book during 2017 is framed within political tensions of concern, such as the effects of war, uprisings, occupation, exile and identity, alongside questioning how animators continue to produce their artwork under such conditions, whether they be at home, abroad or in transit. Now, my only concern with this book, as is the case with many studies on animation, is the lack of attention given to sound and its use to relay certain messages. In this way, the chapters provide a foundation for critics and scholars to build upon and view the referenced animations to further an understanding on the making of meaning. In conclusion, this rare collated study must be recognised for its contribution to knowledge, making it integral for those interested in animation, not only on a global but local scale, and those viewing the art form as an aesthetic code and practice, in order to pursue a balanced approach, and I repeat, a balanced approach on how one may view the world and the human condition in light of animation.